Jessica is a great survival village builder, but it can take a beat to figure some things out. Let's save you some time and frustration by quickly looking at about 50 things I wish I knew sooner in Aska. And this last set, I promise you, will save your bacon. Here we go. The game auto saves every morning, but F9 will save your game when you want. You can reassign the control keys in your settings. For example, I changed the buttons that I use for roll, block, scan, just the things that are more natural for me. You can craft basic tools and weapons immediately straight from your character with no workbench. You can right click to move inventory across to storage other players anywhere. For stack splitting, you shift and drag the item to another square. Then you'll get a pop-up with an option of how many you want to move there. You can and should break things down into components. Especially in the beginning, bark and thatch breaks down to fibers. And that's super useful before you have farming set up. When you break an item into its components, you'll notice that the components now get their full health back because they're new items. So that's one way to save resources if something is about to completely degrade. When you have bark and thatch in your inventory, you can shift click on it to instantly turn it into fibers in your inventory, which is much more quickly than disassembling it on the ground. If you're carrying around large items like long sticks, in order to drop them, instead of opening your inventory and dragging it out, you can just press E to throw it on the ground. When you get your first worker in, you can assign that worker to your shack that you've built for yourself and let them build another one because you can sleep in any shack or bed. You don't technically even have to have one for yourself. To be able to save a little storage space, you can put whatever tool you're using over in the equip slot on the left and that'll give you an extra space to stock up on things. You don't have to select the tool that you're gonna use to harvest from your hot bar. It will auto select the correct one for you. So if you go from a tree to a rock, it'll automatically switch from your ax to your pickaxe. Any workstation without a worker assigned to it will have a big exclamation point over it. So that's an easy way to tell when you're walking around the village if something needs to be attended to or if you're okay with that workstation not being attended right now. You can die of starvation and you can freeze to death and so can your villagers. I tested this so you don't have to. <laughs> While you're waiting for your first survivor to show up, you can cut things and leave them out on the ground everywhere. When they arrive, they'll be a builder and they will immediately gather everything up off the ground and start building. Hire villagers ASAP. Villagers are your best asset. This is a village builder game. There's no advantage to trying to get everything set up perfectly for them before you call in your first villager. And continue calling in more villagers to help you. As long as you can feed them and get them a bed, make sure that you're using your villagers. That's how the game is designed. You can assign each villager a schedule based on their preferences, like do they prefer working day or night, and your needs at the time. You can set preset schedules to quickly change people to do different things at different times of day. For example, you can have one schedule that is all work 24 hours a day and temporarily set somebody to that schedule so that no matter what they're doing, if they're sleeping or relaxing, they'll hop up and get to work right away. Just don't forget to put them back on a normal schedule again. So for people that I wanna have doing the night shift, I'll set them to sleep during the day, have their work at night with leisure time in the morning and evening. If they're a builder, that'll make them turn off and on lamps. And then I'm gonna create and make this the night shift. Save. And if I wanna apply that to someone else in the future, I can just load in a preset that I've made before. When a villager first appears, they will have a new happiness buff that you can take advantage of and have them work extra time before they get too unhappy and leave. But keep a check on their exhaustion level, which is this little flag icon, and remember to set them back to a normal schedule. This is super useful in the very beginning when you're just trying to get the basics going and you need all the help that you can get. If a villager becomes too unhappy, they will leave your village never to return. You can see their happiness morale meter when you look in their inventory and on the settlement tab. 
and they will come and tell you when there's a problem, so you have time to fix it. I would suggest building a food forager as your first workstation after the campfire and even before the wood gatherer because this gives you storage for food and workers gather food very quickly. They see it easier than you and they bring it home easier than you. This will allow you to hire more people more quickly to get more done because you'll be able to feed them, which is one of the key things to consider in whether you're going to hire somebody else or not. Pinning a build or a repair gives it priority. So if it's pinned up there, that's what they're gonna work on first. And also in multiplayer, if multiple people pin it, then it gets an even higher priority on the list. When you first need to cook food at the fireplace, you need to aim at the bar for the barbecue to be able to cook, and then you can place it on the shelf for your other survivors to be able to get food from there and eat. The only way to restore HP early on is by sleeping in a bed, which is slow, but does work, and eating onions and garlic. Cooked foods have more effect and they last longer in storage. Garlic and onions are most commonly found in birch biome areas. You're welcome. All items last longer in storage than in your inventory or on the ground. Everything deteriorates over time except for Jotunblad. You can drop things on the ground to clear your inventory until you get storage and pick them up later. It takes a long time for things to deteriorate and so they won't despawn quickly, even if you walk away. If you kill an animal or mob and can't harvest it right away, you can come back later to it because the bodies do not deteriorate or despawn. However, if you break it down into its parts and leave the parts laying on the ground, they will start deteriorating. I actually leave Jotunblad on the ground by the Eye of Odin, so it's close by, and because smokers eat anything in storage. I mean anything, but they don't eat off the ground. They also don't like flames, so you could put a torch by your storages. Smokers will be drawn to you if you crouch, which can make them easier to catch. It's also why you might notice them nosing around villagers that are laying in bed. Click on a helper's name after assigning them a task and add details like job strength or weaknesses after their name to quickly see who's doing what in the list or who to assign to what in the list. Because it doesn't show all those details when you're in the settlement tab view. Add a code to a settler's name like D for day and N for night to their name. So if you need to assign someone to do something right now, you'll know who's awake without having to go into their specific screen to see what their schedule is. You can just run down the list quickly. You have to build the forager, stone collector, and wood harvester before you can build a workshop. Upgrading to a workshop and stonecutter huts is how you advance to the next level of tools, including bows and clothing, and getting villagers to craft for you. You should task the crafter to make completed items. You don't need to task them to make all the component parts. If you tell them to make a pickaxe, then they'll automatically make the parts for it to be able to make a pickaxe. However, you should task your crafters to also craft and keep on hand rope, because builders can then come and get that rope to finish buildings around the village. Click and drag tasks in the list to change their priority for what order they get done in. If it's a collecting workshop, then you can't really drag them. You have to go into the individual item and choose whether you want it to be high, medium, or low. And a word of caution about that with the wood workshop, if you have things like bark rated high and logs rated lower medium, then they will break up logs and long sticks to turn them into bark. But if you keep the components like bark and sticks on medium, then they won't do that. They'll just collect them as they are. You can change tasks in a workstation remotely through the settlement tab as long as you are not laying down resting at the time. The Roadmaker tool makes roads. You have to use the hoe to clear the ground first and then use the roadmaker tool to go back and turn it into a road. When you or the villagers are walking or running on a road, you use significantly less stamina. I mean significantly. 
Look at the difference. It's worth it. And villagers prefer to travel on roads, so you can clarify out effective routes for them to go around the village. You can also use the leveling tool to quickly clear large swaths of land for roads. Builders turn lights off and on during leisure time. So set some leisure time at around sunset and they'll light all the candles for you. You can hit Shift F2 to hide the UI and get some great screenshots. Larger raids come at night. Make sure that you have some villagers who are working the night shift if you'd like them to help you with them. Or get your preset schedule set up so that you can switch people to waking up and helping you real quickly. As time goes on, the raids are going to become more complicated and I'm going to do an entirely separate video on that. Use walls as deterrents and stop gaps to delay mobs during raids. Some of the big guys will crash pretty quickly through the early stage walls, but it will slow them down enough that it can give you a chance to get there or get some of your people ready before they start crashing into your base. If you take out all of the mobs at a spawner, they won't return for a year. When you die, you drop all your stuff, but it's not marked, so remember where you were. Also, when you die, you can be reborn in a weakened state, having dropped all of your stuff and losing 30% of your skills, or you can choose to become a ghost and take the soul of one of your villagers. If you are far from home, you can choose ghost, which brings you to the Eye of Odin in your village, then change your mind through the settings tab, through hitting escape and choosing reborn instead, and all of your stuff drops where you are, which is now next to the Eye of Odin. And lastly, this one is going to be multiple parts. Winter is no joke. This is no practice run in this game. You need to prepare for winter. Stock up on firewood. Have it stored near a fire. If you assign someone to the barbecue, that will also have them attend to that fire as well and help keep it alive. Place fires with covers all around your village in key places in advance of winter. You'll get a warning that it's coming. Stock up on food and use it sparingly if you're not sure you have enough. And have a well near your heat source in the winter so that you can stay warm, eat food, and drink water all in a small space when you need to for that first winter until you have the skills and resources to handle it better. Learn from my mistakes, people. You don't want to stand around for an entire season just trying to run and chop trees to get wood to run back and feed the fire before you freeze and then run out of food and have people starve to death. I'm just saying it could happen to you. But fortunately, now you know. Lots more on Asuka coming. Until next time, happy gaming.